Hey church, hope you're doing well. Good morning. Welcome to today's devotion, which I'm going to be sharing around Proverbs 21. So uh, if you like Proverbs, it's going to be a treat for you. If you don't, well, I'm going to hopefully convince you that this is an incredible book, an incredible chapter, wisdom from heaven, and uh, just such incredible wisdom and advice, really, uh, you know, just straight from the heart of the Lord to really help you uh, live out a, uh, a blessed life, an impactful life, a life that, you know, really just makes an impact in uh, in this life and in the next. And so, uh, so we're going to jump into that. There's uh, so much in Proverbs 21, like much of Proverbs, uh, you know, Solomon kind of does a... Uh, like jab jab right hook several times you know just so many like little jabs in there one-liners you know fridge magnet worthy kind of verses and then sometimes just comes in with these absolute knockout blows that would be enough to uh, really just floor the largest of heavyweights with a knockout blow and uh, and verse three uh, of proverbs 21 I felt like was, uh, you know, pretty much a knockout blow. And, and I wanted to just dive into it just for a few moments together. Proverbs 21 verse 3, it says, The Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifices. And uh, I looked, I sort of cross-references, the, there's a, a verse in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 11. And it talks, uh, God uh, sort of says how he, he's sick of the Israelites' sacrifices, you know, sick of this uh, way of living, this mentality, this lifestyle that just says, well, I'm going to make all the mistakes I want to make. I'm just going to live my way uh, and then I'm just going to atone or I'm going to make up for these mistakes by making sacrifices. Back then, it would have most likely been animal sacrifices or something of that nature. Whereas now in, in our context, uh, we might be saying uh, we can look at this and think, oh, you know, Israelites, God's people, man, how silly were they? Uh, you know, they would just live their way and then make animal sacrifices to make up for it when God had a much better way. But we can so easily fall into that trap too. You, you know, we can find ourselves just kind of living our way. You know, we know God says, uh, you know, that uh, that we should live pure, but we want to do all the things we've always done. We, we know God says that we should be of sober mind, but we want to keep going out and, and getting drunk. We, we know God says to do all of these things, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to live my way because, you know, I don't want anybody to rob me of my enjoyment. Uh, I'm going to live my way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to ask God for forgiveness and I'm going to you know, make sure I open my Bible uh, the next day. Or I'm going I'm to go to church every Sunday because if I go to church every Sunday, then I can just basically do whatever the heck I want. And and God is or Solomon, you know, God through Solomon is, is kind of speaking in to this mentality of, uh, you know, I can just do whatever I want and then I'm just going to ask God for forgiveness and then it's all going to be OK. And we kind of we cheapen the, the, the mercy of God, the grace of God when we live like that. And, and that's why Solomon is saying that the Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifices. In other words, get it right on the on the front end rather than just thinking that we can do whatever we want and then atone for it down the line it is why don't we allow God to change our heart and actually desire to live the way that he has called us to live. Uh, what, what I've discovered and I'm sure many of you are, are, are discovering too as, as I'm continuing to discover it is that actually God has not designed for us a rules based religion he's designed for us a relationship and it's easy to sort of quote that and that that all kind of sounds nice you know again could have quotes about uh, this is a relationship not a religion on a fridge or and we've probably all been quoted to have said that at some point but but what that means is is a change of heart it's not just a, a bunch of laws that don't really change us internally, but just change the external way we live. Like I'm going to do X, Y and Z wrong, but then it's OK because I'll do X, Y and Z to make up for it. Uh, you know, to, to atone is actually to, to cancel out. It's, uh, it's to make up for those things we've done wrong. But, but God actually has designed for us a, a relationship. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. And again, we know that and we, we I think we all believe that, but sometimes we live 
like that's not true because we think I'm just going to live my way and then I'm going to ask God for forgiveness and try and make up for it on the back end. But God has designed this relationship for us actually for not only for his glory, but also for our uh, enjoyment, our betterment and our fruitfulness. And when we think that oh, I'm just going to live my way because I want to enjoy myself or I need this thing in my life, I, I need to watch that thing or do that thing or, or drink or eat that thing or smoke that thing, whatever. Right? When I, when I say I, I need these things to enjoy life or to have rest or to have peace or to get the most out of life, we've missed the whole point and we've missed what God is trying to do because actually his way, as cliche as this can sound, his way is the best way. And this is what you know Solomon and, and God are trying to get across here is, is that actually God has designed this life for us that's so much better than anything we could imagine. And, and God doesn't give us these rules, this, this framework, because we can say that it's not a rules-based religion, but there are things that God outlines, you know, the Ten Commandments and, and things that God sort of sets out that we should follow. Uh, but what we need to realize is that, that they're not there to be rules that we have to follow in order to be right. They're actually designed to give us the most amazing life, the most fruitful life. God doesn't give us laws just to be mean and restrictive and stop you living your best life. He actually wants to create those boundaries for you so that you can live the most free life. It's like, for instance, you're walking towards the edge of a cliff and there's no warnings, there's no boundaries, there's nothing that's going to stop you. And it will be so easy to fall off that cliff. Actually, the guidelines that God has created for our lives are uh, is like a fence going across that cliff. And we can be walking or running in a direction. We're thinking, I'm enjoying this. This is amazing. And I like where I'm headed. And, and then we hit a brick wall. We hit a wooden fence. And we, we feel like, God, why are you restricting me in this way? But actually, it's because he's designed this life for us to be healthy, to be happy, to be whole. It's just sometimes we think that we know better. And we have to live our way to live fulfilled. But he has a better way. And so I, I wanted to encourage you this morning because at different scales, different levels, we can all find ourselves falling into this trap of just thinking it doesn't matter how I live because God will just forgive me and I'll just bring sacrifices. I'll I'll read my Bible more. I'll pray more. I'll give more to the church, to charity. I'll, I'll turn up on Sundays. I'll serve on a team. These are all sacrifices that we, whether knowingly or unknowingly, make and decide to make in our heads to, to make up for the wrong things we've done when nothing we do can ever make up for our mistakes. It's actually the, the blood of Jesus that has already been poured out on the cross that atones for our sins, that makes up for our sins. And in that, God desires, God wills that there would be actually a transformation of our heart so that we can get to a point where it's not about rules, it's not about sacrifices, but it's actually about our heart inclining towards him and wanting to make the decision to live his way rather than our way. Because his way truly is the most blessed way. It's the way that's going to bring you the most fulfillment. It's the way that's going to bring you the most joy. It's going to way that's going to, it's going to give, bring you the most longevity, rest, peace, and all of those things. And he's designed it that way. So let's be a people today that follow his way. Let's not be a people that say, well, it doesn't matter how I live because I can just make sacrifices for it, make up for it down the line. No, let's live his way today because that truly is the most blessed way. Praying for you today, church, that you have the most amazing day, that you live his way, that you experience the blessing of living his way. And there's a joy that truly overtakes your heart when you do follow him in that way. Amazing. Have an amazing day, church. We love you and we'll see you soon.